feet and the hands.
chair. Arms in front. Hips go back. We're going to exhale. Inhale. Exhale.
So what, what happens in this work, thank you? you I know you're a dancer at heart. He is, you used to perform. I remember that, huh? the good old days. You yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know how a point, point, point in time I have to bow out to look back. <laughs> well, this is a type of movement, right? Uh, the yogic form has many, you know, it proposes form. It proposes connections in the body, openings, integrations of breath, energy flowing, right? It, it allows the body to find simplicity in complexity. Complex movement. And where we're going to go now will be, I'm going to just talk about a little bit. Um, because this is where, I know you probably have never seen my work, but the, the work seeks to find the truth in the telling of stories. And the stories come from the body. We have so many stories in it's really like the house, the, the, the place and the space of belonging. Because we belong in our body. And everything that has happened to us, every experience, is housed here somewhere. Right? It's here. It kind of comes, experiences are emotion, they are spirit, right? It's energy, uh, it's thoughts. Sometimes it's thoughts that get stuck somewhere because we, we're not quite sure how to process things that happen. But those things land in the sinew, they land in the bones, they land in the body. So when engaged in this form, and it's an eyes closed form, you engage deeply with your own mythopoetic. Can you understand what I mean by that? We there is an amazing poetry in us. We are all moving poets. We are all moving poetry. There's every imaginable emotion, feeling, expression in our bodies. Much of our conditioning in the Western world in particular, and I would say in America, I mean, I, I've only lived in one other country, um, and it's just the opposite. In Africa, in Mali. Um, I've traveled a lot, but um, our country is ashamed of our bodies. Women are taught to shame. We are embarrassed. We have been. I don't know about men, right? I mean, do men feel shame in their body? No. Not too much. Well, because. But the male body tends to get um, more support in space. You know, one of the things that we find that women are conditioned, right? Some women are conditioned to never have their legs farther apart than this, um, right? And, you know, when a woman sits down, very seldom, right, they don't take up space in a seat. You walk in a room and you see how the men are sitting there taking up space. Women tend to dimin diminish themselves in space. So basically what, those are, that's just one of the conditions. That's a cultural condition. Um, and I think we, we learn at an early age through iconic dolls and marketing strategies that there is something wonderful out there that we are not. We're never going to be that, right? There are these just huge, iconic ideas. Um, only the perfect, beautiful, tall women make a lot of money. You know, I mean, there's, just a, there's so many. There's so many. I mean, I could go on and on. But, but we learn that somehow we're not enough. And so it, it um, compromises our sense of self-worth in our body. And it's not just, I'm not, I'm not just saying it's just women. I just see the harassment of the feminine body in our culture. Um, so we're, what this form is about is us mobilizing into our own experience without judgment.
without going good, bad, wish I was this, wish I was that. It's a very important space to be in our own being. Um, we release our self-aggression and enter into our movement as a beloved friend. Enter. Have you ever read Rumi? Have you ever read any of Rumi's poetry, a Sufi poet? His whole life experience was looking for the beloved. And in all of his poems, you, you understand that he was looking for the beloved within him. Um, and, and so really, his poetry is really gorgeous, very spiritual. Um, and so one of the things that we do when we enter into our dance is just to listen, just listen. And when the mind starts to start judging it, and we start thinking we're doing it wrong, or that um, we should be doing something else. We just come back to our breath. Our breath is our anchor. Our breath is our way in. It's truly our way in, right? The breath comes in, enters in, nourishes us, and then moves our interiorities out into so when we, when the mind, right, this form is about calming this, you calm it, and you open the heart, because the heart is now. The heart is where we experience all the good stuff, where like you feel momentarily connection to someone. The mind is sitting there judging the loud stuff. It's going, well, last time I met somebody, oh, he reminds me of somebody, so I don't think I like him. Right? We're doing all this stuff. We're, we're sizing ourselves up. We're analyzing, labeling, um, trying to figure out where we fit in this situation. Um, so we want to release that. And the one way to do it is to take a breath in, follow it, and allow the breath to stabilize, and then breathe in again, and just follow those impulses. Right? You just follow what, what feels right to you. And you just keep following, following the thread. There's a thread. And it's about what you don't know. It's about following, going in deeper, and allowing yourself to have whatever movement feels right, okay? So the eyes stay closed, and then we partner up, and one person is the witness to the other's dance. Okay, I will witness both of you the first round, so that you get, <laughs> but your eyes are closed, and you're, you know, make sure you, you feel safe, right? You kind of, I mean, that's my job, actually. If I see you <laughs> barreling over, I will come and touch Especially with those big legs. <laughs> big arms. Do yeah, you, you know. You How tall are you? Lighting right now, it How tall are you? Oh, you. seeing that, it might be. What, do we have something that's yeah, a little lighter? Hi, I'm fine. No, this is fine. You know what? You'll feel the light. It, it's actually it's part of the experience because we're responding because your eyes are closed and you will feel the light you will you know like right there i can i can feel it but what we're experiencing is my interior you know, my interior life feeling light and what does that feel like and i bring it back in um, and have whatever experience and this is very much about yogic meditation, is honor where you are. What is the name of this one? Well, there are many names. Authentic movement. It's searching for our own authenticity. Not trying to be somebody else. Uh, releasing preconceived notions about what you should look like, 
before we go into this with our eyes open. And we're going to just call it the small dance. Okay? I don't mind at all. Go. Go. Is there a water bottle? Uh, yeah, there's a bubbler right out here. A bubbler? Is that a New England term? <laughs> A bubbler. A bubbler. Index finger. 
Okay, whatever. Yeah, okay. whatever. Okay, so then you'll both, let me, let me see where your cut is. Oh, okay. So we're going to use our left sure. finger, which will be really interesting since you're both right handed. <laughs> 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 All right, so I'm going to tell you what the form of this dance is. So come closer. And you are just going to touch your left index finger. Feel the energy there. Just feel it and breathe into it. Just acknowledge the energy force. And we are passing an enormous amount of energy.
body scanning in meditation you go to a part of your body and you release and you move it oh, I just got it on again today. yeah <laughs> yeah good um, but I'm going to call out a very specific part and I'll try to keep generic and you know, anatomous so it skeleton you see the hip bone and then you see this yeah projection <laughs> but I'm going to call out really specific areas and you move it through the whole sound until the sound dissipates and then I'll do it again I'll gong it and then you move the sound with that part of the body, okay, until the whole, I'm going to try to wake up a lot of sensation. Do you just move, like if you said the finger, um, would you just move the finger or would you start with the finger and keep moving? Yeah, so good question. Um, following, this is sort of my next idea with what you just did, which the idea was to follow, just follow, wherever the impulse 
between you. Sorry. I have two daughters who are. shoulder, you would play the sound and carve with that, locate this area and carve through the sound. Is that a clear idea? And following the sound. Okay, so go walk, walk around the room for a minute, walk around, <sighs> shake out. shoulder 
belly button.
tend to focus in on our interiorities when we outward, right? Really going in to express outwardly. Um, beautiful. It's really great. I um, you may want to look at this. I don't know what you were seeing, <laughs> but man, anything that had to do with the face was so fascinating. considerations we have. This is your dance. It's nobody else's. You can never do this wrong because it's you listening deeply to how and what your body wants to experience. Okay? So, if this is where you want to begin, you will be moving for seven minutes. Put seven minutes out there. Okay? So find a place you want to begin. And know that your eyes are going to be closed the whole time. Okay? Is there going to be music? No. The music is your deep listening to you. You are following the music in your body. By that I mean not music the way that it's not a symphony or anything. It's you going in and following impulses. What's an impulse? What, if I said follow an impulse, what is it? What does that mean to you? Hmm? Okay. Where did you say? gut feeling. It's, it's something that has, it's inevitable. Let's put it this way. There is an inevitability because it isn't about making choice. You see, the body, the body has a wisdom. The body has an innate wisdom. And we are just accessing our innate wisdom. We're saying, how do you want to move? innate wisdom within. Okay? So we begin with the eyes closed. I'm just following your breath. Enter 
Breathing in with the breath. And when you hear the bell, the gong, begin.
applications and using being able to pick up on it so quickly or counting it or whatever. Um, it's like part of who I am and and like that's that's my beliefs. So um, I felt kind of naked in this but that was music. Um, and and at first like songs that I was listening to today started popping into my head but I tried to push them out. Um, and and then I started to connect to pain that I'm feeling in my body. And then I think I started to feel better. In entering into our own experience, I mean that was part of your experience. Mm -hmm. So there's no judgment about it. Um, the work is about what we talk. And I always say this particularly to Brown students. I do this a lot at the AL and Harvard with people who it's very frightening not to know. And this is a meditation. 
from all of them. All of them. And we did a three day, three seven days of authentic movement. And I've been training in those three years. And, and what was so fascinating was to see the varying layers of consciousness that unfolded. It's a higher consciousness. Yeah, 
but to then all of a sudden And 
bone seized up, spine seized up. And we, I mean, this is a, it didn't just happen, but maybe a week, two weeks later in a rehearsal, and he couldn't move his head, and he was frozen. We had to take him to the emergency room where they did um, x-rays. And he found out he had a 90-year-old man stroke. He had bone spurs all over his part of the body. I mean, and those are things that the doctor was saying, are you, are you sure this is your x-ray? Because you're 21 years old. So his body was telling the story. Um, so we kept trying to uncover what is the story. We wrote text about it. Um, so that's how our text gets written. Who's in the chain? 
Thank you so much.